the curves given by the vectored valued functions r sub 1 of t and r sub 2 of t intersect at the origin. We're asked to find the angle of intersection in radians on the domain, which is a closed interval from 0 to pi to two decimal places. The angle of intersection of two curves is equal to the angle between the tangent vectors to the two curves at the point of intersection. So before we find this angle, let's look at this graphically. The graph of r sub 1 of t is graphed in blue, and the graph of r sub 2 of t is graphed in red. Notice how the two curves do intersect at the origin, this point here. And notice how this graph also includes tangent vectors to the curves at this point of intersection. If we pause the graph here, notice how this black vector is tangent to the red curve at this point, and this black vector is tangent to the blue curve at this point. And therefore, the acute angle of intersection is equal to this angle here between these two vectors. So going back to our work, the first step is to find the value of t for each vectored valued function that corresponds to the point at the origin. So looking at r sub 1 of t, notice how each component has a factor of t, which means when t is 0, each component will be 0, and therefore the point on the curve will be at the origin. So let's go ahead and make a note here that r sub 1 of 0 would have an x component of negative 2 times 0, a y component of 0 to the fifth, and a z component of negative 5 times 0 to the third, which does give us the zero vector. And now let's look at r sub 2 of t. And let's focus on the z component. We want to find the value of t that would make each component equal to zero. Well, if t minus pi has to be zero, notice that t would have to be equal to pi. And notice that sine at negative 2 pi and sine pi would also be zero. And therefore, we now know that r sub 2 of pi will give us a zero vector. The x component is sine of negative 2 pi. The y component is sine pi. And the z component is pi minus pi, which does give us the zero vector, which means the point on the curve will be at the origin. we need to find the derivatives of r sub 1 of t and r sub 2 of t. So let's go ahead and find r sub 1 prime of t first. So we find the derivative of each component with respect to t. So the derivative of negative 2t with respect to t is negative 2. The derivative of t to the fifth with respect to t is 5t to the fourth. And the derivative of negative 5t cubed is negative 15t squared. Now to find the tangent vector at the origin, we need to evaluate this at t equals zero. But before we do this, let's also find r sub two prime of t. Looking at the x component, we need to apply the chain rule to find this derivative. The derivative of sine negative two t with respect to t is going to be cosine negative two t times negative two, or negative two cosine negative two t. The derivative of sine t is cosine t. And the derivative of t minus pi with respect to t is 1. And now to find tangent vectors at the origin, we need to find r sub 1 prime of 0 and r sub 2 prime of pi. Remember, these are the t values that correspond to the points at the origin for the two vector valued functions. So r sub 1 prime of 0 would have an x component of negative 2, a y component of 5 times 0 to the fourth, and a z component of negative 15 times 0 squared, which gives us the tangent vector negative 2, comma, 0, comma, 0. And now we need to find r sub 2 prime of pi, which is going to be negative 2 times cosine negative 2 pi, comma, cosine pi, and the z component is a constant 1. So simplifying, negative 2 cosine negative 2 pi is negative 2, because cosine negative 2 pi is 1. Cosine pi is negative 1, and the z component is 1. 
So now we want to find the angle between this tangent vector and this tangent vector. And we can find the angle using this equation here. Let's do this on the next slide. Of course, our vectors aren't v and w. They're r sub 1 prime of 0 and r sub 2 prime of pi, which means we would have cosine theta equals, we have their dot product in the numerator, and the product of their magnitudes in the denominator. In the numerator, we'd have negative 2 times negative 2 plus 0 times negative 1 plus 0 times 1. In the denominator, we have the square root of the square of negative 2 plus 0 squared plus 0 squared times the square root of the square of negative 2 plus the square of negative 1 plus 1 squared. Simplifying, we have cosine theta is equal to 4 plus 0 plus 0, that's 4. Here we have the square root of 4, and here we have the square root of 6. Well, the square root of 4 is 2, so we have 4 divided by 2 square root of 6. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and therefore this simplifies to 2 divided by square root of 6. So now we know that cosine theta is equal to 2 divided by square root of 6. So to solve for theta, we can take the arc cosine on both sides, or inverse cosine on both sides, and therefore we have theta equals, again, arc cosine or inverse cosine of 2 divided by square root of 6. And now we'll go to the calculator to get a decimal approximation. Let's first verify we're in radian mode, so let's press the mode key. Notice how radian is highlighted, so we'll go back to the home screen. And now I'll press second cosine, and then 2 divided by square root 6, right arrow, close parenthesis, and enter. So notice that theta is approximately 0 0.61548 radians. I think the question does say round to two decimal places, but of course this approximation is more accurate. So going back to our graph one last time, we just found the angle of intersection between these two curves at the origin, or at the point 0, 0, 0, which is the angle between these two tangent vectors. I hope you found this helpful.